Welcome to 2025's Guide to 3D Printing. So if you're a beginner 3D printer or you just decided you want to pick up a 3D printer and you're not really sure to start, well, let's get into it. Now, obviously, the first thing there is is there's resin printing and there's FDM printing. So if you're going the resin printing route, this video is probably not as much for you. I'm really a FDM printer at heart at this point. I did resin print a while ago. I've been 3D printing for about five years and I started with the resin printers. I just thought that the post-processing was too much. There's too many chemicals involved. And also resin like really stinks. I don't know how anyone says it doesn't stink. So if you've been on the fence, uh, honestly, from someone who went from resin only to FDM only for the main part, for the most part, I still have my like resin printers up there on a shelf. Um, and I sold my Elgu Jupiter. I just don't think it's worth it. That's just my opinion, guys. Don't, don't shoot the messenger, right? Like, but that's just my opinion. So if you've been on the fence, I would definitely lean towards FDM. The reason for that is I think you can do almost anything on an FDM printer at this point that you can do on a resin printer. Of course, resin printers are going to have more detail and they're probably going to be easier to remove the supports, but it's not that it's not possible on an FDM printer. All right. So you're not sure where to start. You're wondering what printer you should buy. Um, for a beginner, there's only three printers that I would recommend. The Bamboo A1 Mini, which if you're only looking at printing like little fidget toys or maybe small stuff like planters or little cups, I don't know, whatever you want to print, I would pick up the A1 Mini. And that one's only like $230, I believe, or $220. I think it's a great 3D printer to start. You're not spending too much money. I um, mean, you can really find out if you want to get into the hobby, and that leaves you with more money to buy another 3 3D printer down the road. The next I would recommend is the Elegoo Centauri Carbon. Um, I, it is on pre-order, so it really is hard for me to recommend. So if you're willing to wait for it, I actually think it's the best of the three here. Um, the A1 Mini is in stock and ready to ship, so it's a little bit different. Um, but I, I would recommend getting the Carbon if you can wait. The next 3D printer that I would recommend if you're not wanting to wait, but you want something bigger than the A1 Mini is the Bamboo Lab A1. Now, I own both the Carbon and the A1, so I'm very comfortable recommending them. If you have any issues with them, let me know. I can try to help you. Elegoo's customer service is great anytime I've had issues with their printer. Watch my latest updated review on the Elegoo Centauri Carbon and also the Bamboo Lab A1. I've not even had an issue with it that I need to contact customer service. Now, with both of those printers, I have a couple hundred hours of print time each. I think the Bamboo Lab A1, I'm probably over 500 hours now. And the carbon, I'm nearing 300. Outside of that, um, I haven't tried any of the other beginner printers, such as the K1, some of the Flash Forges, Sovels. I know Elgu Neptune series are really cheap now. I haven't tried any of those. The Ender 3 seems like kind of old news. I know there's a newer one that's been pretty good. But again, those are the two printers that I've used, being the Bamboo Lab A1 and the Centauri Carbon. So those are the ones I would recommend. And I think you'll have the least issues with them as well. Again, disclaimer. I have not used the other printers, and honestly, if they wanted to send me one and for me to compare it to them, I for sure would and make a video about it. And if those are better, I will preach that till the day I die. Okay, so the next the next thing you want to decide is what do you want to print with as far as what filament should you buy? Okay, here with filament, I've used Overture, and Elegoo has been my daily driver at this point. The reason that I use Elegoo is it's pretty cheap. I've also used Sunloo, I believe it is. It's like $12 on Amazon. Um, Elegoo, I think in Sunloo, I read somewhere they come from the same factory. Don't quote me on that, guys. I have no idea. But I, I figured I would start using Elegoo since I use their printer a lot, and the bamboo one, I think, is like they're just too expensive. When you're at twenty dollars for a roll of filament, I don't think you need to spend that much. And Elegoo, I can end up getting like a four pack sometimes for like forty two bucks. I'll leave a link down below to the Amazon affiliate link. You don't have to buy it from my affiliate link, um, but just search four pack Elegoo PLA and you can find it on Amazon. And the spring sale was recently, so I got it for like forty two dollars. I picked up two packs. So I got eight. Eight rolls for like $85. I've had no issues with this filament. Like my whole B1 Battle Droid build that I have up here on the channel is pretty much all Elgu filament with some Overture mixed in that I already had. I do use Overture for colors a lot of the times. Um, I've seen Polymaker as well has pretty good reviews, but I haven't used them. For the most part, all PLA is really the same. You dial in the settings, and once the settings are dialed in, don't worry about it. I would probably just find the cheap stuff. Um, you do have to worry about some chemical additives if it's not from like a big time company. So I would stick to the pro So I guess don't just get any old cheap stuff, I guess. I would stick with like Sunloo is popular, Elgoo is popular, um, Anycubic, Creality. 
you know, all the main brands of printers have their own filaments. Um, Overture is like, I've only heard of them through basically filament, Polymaker, the same thing. Um, so, so stick with the main brands, I guess, and just find whatever's cheapest and on sale at the time. Don't worry too much about the filament. Honestly, I found it super stressful trying to pick like the best filament. What should I print with? Should I buy PLA plus? Should I buy this? Should I buy that? that, that and I was just going all over the place. Like just pick one, I guess. Like I recommend picking up Elegoo because it's cheap again. And if you're going to be painting it, it doesn't matter what color it is. There's also like different types of filament, such as like carbon fiber, ABS, for beginners, I wouldn't recommend dealing with any of those. I would stick your foot in dealing with some pet G um, for some more flexible stuff. Like on my Centauri carbon review video, I had different door hinges. I printed those out of pet G because it is a little stronger than PLA or at least a little more flexible. So I didn't think it would break. ABS, you're getting into the realm of there is a lot of fumes and toxicity when it comes to printing that stuff, at least compared to PLA in some of this test. I've seen some YouTubers do here on YouTube. Um, so I wouldn't recommend those at all, like with the carbon fiber and different things. I, I wouldn't recommend those for beginners. Also have some wood filament. I would kind of steer clear away from that because I've also seen that it clogs a lot of people's uh, nozzles. Just to show, like I've been printing with the Elegoo filament here. I've had it on there. Um, and I have the Bamboo Lab with the AMS light. The Centauri Carbon is also printing with the same filament. Okay, so now that we've kind of talked about what 3D printer you should buy, what material you should use, Let's kind of go into um, where do you find your files and what should you 3D print? As far as where to find 3D prints to like go ahead and try out outside of like your basic like Venchi, the boat that you print, right? To start once you get your 3D printer, you got like Iron Man mask and stuff like that. You can find like easy things or like really popular things such as the Iron Mask. Throw that over there. Um, online for like Maker World, on like Maker World, which is Bamboo Labs like site. Um, you know, there's a uh, thingiverse. There's a lot of free site things, uh, cults 3D. There's a lot of sites that you can go and print or get free 3D prints from. Um, if you want to start getting into more of the paid stuff, there's a lot of different Patreons. I have a video up on the channel talking about where I get a lot of my 3D prints. Um, just to name a few is Galactic Armory. Well, I guess I'll name all of them in that video. Galactic Armory, Hex 3D, um, Enjoy Division. I've bought from every single one of those and I would highly recommend them. If you're looking at starting a 3D printing business, you really have to be careful and make sure that you have the commercial rights or um, what it is to mass print those and sell them online. And just remember, if you're doing this for a business, you're going to be dealing with tons of competition. Um, so everyone's going to have access to that that pays for that file as well. I wouldn't recommend starting a 3D business right away. I would, if, if honestly, if you're looking at starting a 3D printing business, I would definitely try to learn how to design things yourself. That's one of the reasons that I don't do it because there's going to be really fierce competition with anything that you're 3D printing that anyone can just go purchase and then sell themselves, right? Like you want to be unique in your offering. So if you have a file that you created and you can sell it and no one else can sell it, then you're already one up in the game. So going into this, now you know you, where you can find files, you're going to start your print. So in the slicer, I won't be honest, I'm not a slicer expert. I think you're safe just using most of the normal settings when it comes to using a slicer. Um, <laughs> like, I put in my whole battle droid. Let me show you my battle droid. I put in this whole battle droid, right? Just using organic tree supports, running the slicer, and hitting print. I did nothing special. I did not add my own, uh, you know, anything anywhere. I just let the printers do a thing, and most of the prints came out beautiful. If you're using a Bamboo Lab printer, you will have to use their slicer, but if you're using something such as the Elegoo Centauri Carbon, you can use Orca or you can use the Elegoo slicer. And I believe it's open source, so they're starting to open it up for every 3D printer. I'm sorry, not every 3D printer, every slicer. So next we'll go into a few tips. So my number one tip is gonna be, just don't get frustrated. There's gonna be a lot of times when you're 3D printing where something just isn't work, it's not printing correctly, maybe your printer head broke or something. Don't get frustrated by it. It literally happens to every single person. Yeah, the printer that you buy can minimize the errors that you have, but every single person has had something go wrong with their 3D printer that they just can't figure out how to fix. Take it as a learning opportunity, and now you'll know next time, or you can use that knowledge to help people on the internet that had your same problem. So if you guys have any questions as well, ask them down below. I'll, I'll like the comment or like heart it or whatever they call it, love the comment. If I can't answer it, then I hope someone else will. But no, I'm going to see it. Like, uh, And I'll try to help anyone out if I've had similar experiences. I think the 
3D printing community. And this will lead me into um, tip number two is don't fall into the toxicity. So there's a lot of gatekeepers when it comes to the 3D printing community that have been in here for like 10 years. And they're very like hardcore, like, no, print this way, print that way. You don't know anything about 3D printing because you use a Bamboo Lab A1. Who cares what other people think, first off, right? I'm creating these cool projects that they probably wish they could do. And I'm using a Bamboo Lab A1, right? So some people are super selfish. They like to the gatekeep. They like to make others feel bad for whatever reason. So just, you know, be happy with what you create. Don't compare yourself to others. And genuinely, I am here to help people um, 3D print and go through um, their experiences with them sometimes if I can help you again. Like moving on to some actual 3D printing tips. Those were, you know, more psychological tips. Uh, make sure you got a clean uh, bed. So you want to use some Windex on it or you want to use some dish soap. Wash your printer bed every couple prints so that way you don't end up failing. My bamboo one goes usually about 15 prints and then I need to wash it. My next tip is being willing to experiment because a lot of times when you're post-processing some sort of 3D prints, right, maybe you're using... Um, you know, something to sand them and it's just not working. Try something else. Like everyone has different things that they've been working on. And sometimes what works for someone else is not going to work for you. Or maybe you find something easier to do. Um, there's a lot of creativity in the 3D printing community. So I think just be willing to try new things. Don't, don't, you don't have to copy everything everyone else does. For example, when I built my droid, it's my droid, right? It, you know, yours doesn't have to look the same. I'm here to help you. Um, and I'll answer any questions, you know, what paint did I use? What did I do? I've made a video on how I did certain things, but be willing to experiment yourself. And my last tip is just going to be take it slow. So I know a lot of these have been more of like psychological tips, um, but I think a lot of times we like to dive into things way too fast and then we get overwhelmed and, and then you take a break and then you never pick up your 3D printer again. So just make sure you take things slow, you know, work on things one day at a time. Sanding sucks. So don't overwhelm yourself with all the sanding at first, you know, take a little hour here, take a little hour there and then get back into it. Lastly, guys, to close this out, all I have to say is just have fun with 3D printing. If you have any questions, most of the stuff is readily Google. You know, you can just put it in Google, look it up. It's a hobby. Have fun. Don't take it too serious. Share your creations online. There's a ton of good Facebook groups because that would be another tip, right? Join the Facebook groups, ask questions, search in the Facebook groups if there is questions. I don't really know what else to offer you guys as far as like, you know, a guide because you, I can show you everything, but most of this stuff is already available online. So I'm really just here sharing my experience. I hope you guys have fun with it. Um, I hope maybe even like my channel, you'll hit that subscribe button and follow me along the way, show you guys good creations. I am going to make more videos and I'm only trying to improve every day. So the greatest tip I got from someone on YouTube and it's really helped me even just like over the past month really grow the channel is every single time I post, learn something new. And you can take that same attitude with 3D printing. Every time you print something, learn something. So every time you post process something, every time you sand and paint a droid or, you know, do something, learn something from it. I think that's the greatest, um, the greatest tip that I've received in like the last like six months. And it was just reading or watching a random video. And I don't even remember who posted the video. And I'm sure that someone else is giving that same advice to a lot of people because it's so good. Um, it's just, you know, learn from your mistakes or even just learn from everything. Even if you did a good job, sometimes you can always improve it. Just continue to try to get better. Now, I don't know. Anyway, I'm randomly, guys. If you guys really enjoyed this video, I know, again, it was more of like a psychological thing. Hit that like button. Comment down below. Subscribe, guys. And I hope I see you guys next time.